Welcome to the first video in the series on writing ionization equations, reverse ionization equations, and precipitation equations. An ionization equation is a chemical equation, a balanced chemical equation, that shows the formation of ions from an ionic compound. We'll start by actually just going ahead and working an example. So I have a compound here. This one is called, you might remember this from the video series on naming ionic compounds. This is called sodium iodide. And we want to write the balanced um, ionization equation for this compound. In order to do that, we follow the exact same rules for writing equations for, for balanced chemical equations in general. So I'm going to rewrite my formula. And then I'm going to show the transition from the formula into its constituent ions by first using an arrow. This indicates that a transition is going to happen. And now I write the two ions separated by a plus sign. Now, it's important to recognize that we have to follow the same rules for writing these equations as we do for standard chemical equations. So one of those requirements is that we have the same numbers and types of elements on both sides of the equation. So just checking very quickly, we see on this side of the equation I have one sodium here, and on this side of my arrow I have one sodium here. On the left side of my arrow I have one iodide, and on this side of the arrow I have one iodide. So this is a correctly balanced chemical equation, and technically speaking it is a correctly written ionization equation for the formation of ions from sodium iodide. In the next example, we're looking at the compound that is called magnesium chloride. And we are going to write the ionization equation for this formula. So I'm going to rewrite my formula, MgCl2. I use an arrow to indicate that the transition from the formula to the ions is going to occur. I write down the metal cation, Mg plus 2, and then I write down my anion, but in this case I need to be careful because you see when you look at the formula that there are actually two chlorides. And I indicate that using what we call a coefficient. This is a number that appears written before the element, the compound, or in this case the anion. So the subscript becomes what we call a coefficient. Now, when we check to see if we have written a correctly, balanced, in a, uh, a correctly balanced equation, we have one mg on this side of the arrow, and we have one mg on this side of the arrow. We have two Cl's on this side of the arrow, and we see that we have two Cl's on this side of the arrow. So this is a correctly written ionization equation. In the next example, we have a type 1 compound where sodium has been combined with a polyanion. Specifically, sodium ion is combined with carbonate. And in this case, we're going to once again write an ionization equation. So we start by writing down the formula Na2CO3, followed by an arrow that indicates that we're now going to split this compound into its ions. We see that, that in the formula, there is a a subscript 2 indicating that there are two sodiums, so we use a coefficient that precedes the elemental symbol for sodium. It's sodium ion, so we put its charge in. Then we have a plus sign, which means and, and then we write carbonate, CO3 minus 2. And this is a properly written ionization equation for the formation of ions from sodium carbonate. It's also properly balanced. We have two sodiums here and two sodiums here. We have one carbonate and one carbonate here. In the next example, um, we're going to ionize calcium hydroxide. So I rewrite the formula. I use an arrow, and then I need to separate the formula into ions. Calcium is out of group two, so it's Ca plus two. We see the subscript next to it is a one. And by convention, we don't show ones. And then we see with hydroxide, it's inside of parentheses. And outside the parentheses, down and right of the parentheses, is subscript 2. And that means that 
there are going to be two hydroxides. The subscript, once again, becomes the coefficient, which multiplies the polyanion. So when we check to see if the equation is balanced, we have one calcium on the left side of the arrow. We have one calcium on the right side of the arrow. There are two hydroxides in the parentheses, and on the right side of the arrow, there are two hydroxides indicated by the coefficient. This is a properly written, balanced ionization equation. Our last example is a more complicated one. We have um, a, another type 1 compound. This is barium phosphate. We're going to ionize it, so I'm going to rewrite my formula. I use an arrow, and now I need to pay attention to my subscripts. We see in the formula that there are three barium ions, so I write down the number three, then the symbol for barium. We know it has a plus two charge because it's in group two. And then we have the plus sign, which means and, followed by phosphate, except we note that there is a subscript two, and that means we need a coefficient multiplying the phosphate. And phosphate is PO4 minus three. So um, now we need to confirm that we have written a balanced equation. We see that on the left side of the arrow, there are three bariums. And on the right side of the arrow, there's three bariums. On the left side of the arrow, there are two phosphates. And on the right side of the arrow, there are two phosphates. So this is a correctly written balanced ionization equation for the ionization of barium phosphate.